Hello, I'm Ryan Baker and this is Big Data in Education. Welcome to week seven on text mining and generative AI and large language models. We're going to start today with text mining. Text mining is an area that's had a major shift in the last few years with a big disjunction in methods and in what is easy to do and what is hard to do. And that disjunction comes down to large language models. Essentially, text mining, and for that matter, natural language processing more generally, can be split into a pre-large language model era and a large language model era. Now, pre-large language model methods sometimes get treated like they're outdated, uh, but in fact, they're still useful for a lot of things, and they're going to be the topic of this lecture. Text mining in general is very different from mining the types of interaction data and course data that I've discussed throughout the rest of this class. And this lecture is only going to skim the surface of this very huge topic. I could have an entire class, and many did, just on uh, pre-LLM text mining and NLP. In fact, multiple such classes. And in specific, different stuff works. Some stuff that works poorly in interaction data works better in text mining. Um, specifically things like support vector machines. And some stuff that works great in interaction data is less relevant in text mining, like, say, Bayesian knowledge tracing, or IRT. There's several interesting attributes of textual data. For one thing, there's really high dimensionality. There's many, many words in a corpus of data, and the historical way it was represented prior to large language models was in terms of every word being its own column. Now, large language models address differences in words by collapsing those many dimensions into a smaller number of dimensions through vector embeddings. But that's not today's lecture. There's also multiple levels of analysis that look very different from each other, from looking at individual phonemes and graphemes to looking at entire books. And analyses with these methods are often conducted at the level of whether individual words are seen, and a popular algorithm for this historically was latent semantic analysis, also called LSA. LSA represents utterances or paragraphs in rows, and each column is a word that can be present, one, or absent, zero. It then conducts singular value decomposition a matrix factorization algorithm that's conceptually similar to the factor analysis and non-negative matrix factorization we talked about earlier to find structure. LSA doesn't look at the syntax of sentences, it just looks at what words are present. Although it does consider the co-occurrence of words across large corpuses. Alternatively, analysis might be conducted using pairs of words in order called bigrams, or triplets of words even in order called trigrams. For example, in the classic sentence, colorless green ideas sleep furiously, the bigrams would be colorless green, green ideas, ideas sleep, sleep furiously. It's impressive that every single pair of words in this sentence actually doesn't really make sense. And this was actually intentional in the creation of the sentence, famously, I think, by Noam Chomsky. Another approach is to reduce specific words to semantic categories, such as sports, business, time, other things prior to analysis. And this allows easier categorization of the types of utterances that's less dependent on the presence of exactly specific words, with the idea being that, for example, a post about basketball might be semantically similar to a post about football. Or, uh, I was going to say soccer, but football can be soccer too. One popular tool for using this in the United States is Luke, and in the UK, WMatrix. Another type of tool can provide coherence metrics. Um, and this is ultimately an updated version of the kind of reading level metrics, such as Fleisch Kincaid. These metrics try to answer the question, how hard is a text to read? And one of the popular tools for doing this in uh, more classic NLP is Cometrics. Another one is Taco. People also look in terms of lexical sophistication, which is how complex or advanced a text and the words in it are. A popular tool for this is Tails, which also includes many other measures as well, including measures of cohesion. <laughs> People also look at syntactic complexity, which consists of how complex or advanced the grammatical features in a text are, and a tool for that is the L2 Syntactic Complexity Analyzer. And finally, there's been a lot of interest over the years in sentiment analysis, which is assessing emotion or attitude from text, typically in terms of positive emotion and negative emotion. There are many, many tools out there for this, most popularly, probably the aforementioned Luke, but there's also in education the tool Seance. So as you can see, there's a great variety of tools and research questions that people looked at in classical text mining, NLP, and I didn't even cover a lot of stuff like diarization to tell which speaker uh, is speaking at a certain time. Um, and 
This work has been incredibly fruitful. Again, there's still a lot of cases where it actually works really well, even better than large language models. In our next lecture, we're going to move on to talking about those large language models and how they change things. Thank you very much. I'm Ryan Baker, and this is Big Data in Education. See you next lecture for large language models.